Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I explore what would happen if we converted Starship to use hydrogen and oxygen instead of its normally configured methane and oxygen. Specifically I'm talking about the Starship Lunar Lander because it would be more useful for it to use hydrogen and oxygen because we can refuel it more easily on the moon because the moon has some water uh, though we don't know exactly how to make efficient use of it yet we haven't done that kind of testing on the surface but in principle we could refuel it on the moon as opposed to methane and oxygen methane uh, requires carbon and while there is a tiny 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 concentration of carbon inside lunar regolith it would take roughly three million tons of processing lunar regolith in order to refuel a single starship with the methane so that is not especially since we have no idea how to remove the carbon from the regolith uh, that does not seem likely whereas at least we know how to get uh, hydrogen and oxygen out of water so that's a good thing what would happen if we converted this into hydrogen and oxygen right now it's methane and oxygen I have placed a 50 ton payload into the bay you can see 50 tons wet there that's just av gas so it won't affect the delta V reading and if we take a look at the overall delta V reading because I'm not going to launch this version I launched the hydrolox version hydrogen and oxygen version uh, we see that we have 11,796 meters per second here and the sea level thrust weight ratio is 1.5 actually maybe I will launch it I take it back I, I want to launch it and see how much delta V we end up uh, with at orbit after reserving of course some propellant for the return of super heavy and we are expecting to have maybe 20 seconds left there so you can see all the numbers here so that you can get a sense of what we have we have basically a 100 ton dry mass for the lunar lander there with the engines and uh, of course it's got the little side thrusters as well now the side thrusters are going to have to be converted to hydrolox too so that's a complication but basically what I've done is, oh, uh, we're not using my engines. These are the engines from the real engine pack. That's not good. So I have my own Raptor engines and I added the configuration, the hydrogen and oxygen configuration to those. And again, the motivation for this is to be able to refuel it on the moon easier. After all, Starship was made originally for Mars. A refueling methane and oxygen on Mars is not a problem and that's what it was meant for and it's always important to keep in mind what things were designed for originally instead of uh, just try to shoehorn them into every single task they they generally aren't made for every single task so it's important in engineering terms to be cognizant of that and in this case Starship wasn't originally meant for the moon I mean it certainly has Delta V and if Delta V was the only thing we were interested in, it would be no problem. But Delta V is not the only thing we're interested in. So apologies, my Starship model is quite inferior to many others, but it at least has the right numbers, or at least as good as we can get them. So uh, Raptor engine we have here. There are numerous configurations depending on how much chamber pressure they can get out of it. But we're on the 2020 version of it and uh, there's a hydrolox version here that uses the same chamber pressure and I ran the numbers through RPA light and so the sea level ones get these stats really really wonderful sea level ISP as you can see and that is because of the high chamber pressure uh, the vacuum ISP is, is obviously outdone by other engines because it doesn't have that big a nozzle but if we take a look at uh, these engines over here the vacuum ones and go to the Hydrolox vacuum, they get uh, 464 almost there. Uh, the nozzle isn't quite as long as the RL10B or B2. That one has a 200 uh, nozzle ratio, so it gets a little bit better ISP there. But sea level ISP is very good, like shuttle like. However, it would have flow separation as a Hydrolox engine, I believe. Uh, though the severity of that, I don't know. Flow separation is when. Uh, at, right at the end of the nozzle the atmosphere is sort of pushing in on it in an unpleasant way that could create turbulence and would not be good for the engine so we uh, generally the reason why they use the shorter nozzles on the 
on the sea level ones is to avoid flow separation so that it operates more efficiently. Anyway, uh, so we have uh, those engines and I need to switch this back to the methylox so that it gets its full delta V. Okay, so here we go, getting a sense of the methane oxygen version as a baseline with the current engines from our sea launch platform. Uh, still not extended as far into the sea as it probably should be. Anyway, a throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. We now have very purple methylox flames. One of the drawbacks of hydrogen, of course, is storing it and transferring it in space, which would have to be done. So it is not without its drawbacks. I swear the stage time seemed longer in the BAB, so I'm not sure, but of course they would throttle the engines down. We've got a pretty high thrust weight ratio, actually. And eventually they want to take some engines off. We will have to take some engines off of the Hydrolox version because Hydrolox is lighter. Falcon 9 actually throttles down pretty much right away. So I'm gonna start throttling down here too. And sort of mimic the Falcon 9 sort of deal. In addition to the 50 tons of uh, Avgas payload, we do have food, water, and oxygen as well. So that's in addition. So we'll throw all down through max Q and everything. Okay, slowly throttling back up. But not to 100%, I don't think they would. Okay, throttling down a bit to keep to about 3 Gs. We're about to shut down the engines anyway. Okay, I'll reserve 20 seconds as a rule. Shut down, separation, and ignition. Oh, shoot. I didn't want to start those. Uh, that's a little bit inaccurate. All right. Okay, we are at a sufficient thrust weight ratio where I'm going to shut down the sea level engines. And again, to simulate steering by thrust differential, we do have gimbling on the vacuum engines. Since I'm not actually steering by thrust differential here. The thrust on the Hydrolox engines is about the same. Um, that seems to be the case. I did the calculation and it seems like from the same engine space you get the same thrust. That I do have sort of an odd offset for vacuum engines here, but I put them on hastily. Anyway, but that just seemed to be how it turned out. It's not hugely different. As a result, technically we don't need this many engines on the Hydrolox version of Starship Lunar Lander. Okay, we are in a good enough orbit. We seem to have 2,000 meters per second, and the reason why we're interested in this excess delta V is the two things that add up to refueling capacity is the payload, the 50 tons, as well as the excess delta V. That's how much one starship can replenish another starship. So, and because they need to be refueled in orbit, that's an important thing. So, we, the dry mass of this is about 100 tons. And so we're talking about 150 tons of replenishment capacity. And the total mass of this in the VAB we'll check out again. And so from that we'll be able to figure out how many uh, trips we will need uh, to finish fueling it up for going to the moon and doing whatever it needs to do, assuming that we want a full fuel load for that. 2,000 meters per second, of course, uh, it can do a lot. If it just needs to fly by the moon, maybe one... Uh, if it didn't have the 50-ton payload, it could probably just go ahead and do it. Uh, or if it was just carrying more fuel in lieu of that. So, 
taking a look here. Uh, it's 1,350 tons, basically. Subtract out what I already had there, and then divide by 150 tons each time. We get about seven trips with Starship to refuel it. So that's a lot, but we'll keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the Hydrolox version. Now we are assuming the same overall tank volume in Starship itself. However, the tanks are the split between the tanks is different because of the different fuel volumes necessary. One thing you'll notice is that Starship itself, fully fueled for Hydrolox, that's what we have here, hydrogen and oxygen, is half the mass of the Methylox version. Now it does not have all of the Delta V, but we only need three engines now. We've got two vacuums and one sea level. Um, we could just have the three vacuums, uh, actually. Uh, and there's not necessarily a problem with that except for bringing it back, but then it doesn't have the fins to bring it back with, so maybe we should just go with the three vacuums. But let's keep it to this mix just for sanity's sake. So it's on those configurations that I'd shown you before, and otherwise everything is the same. We don't have um, any configuration for these thrusters here. Those are still methane and oxygen, so that's not right. And in the bay, let me open it up. We uh, once again have a tank here, but oh, I've got 120 tons. Let's let's resize that to the 50 tons we had with the other thing. This was optimistic. Well, I mean, it's not optimistic. It can carry it actually uh, to lower forward. We have that excess delta V there, but we should go with the lunar payload. So it can do the 120 tons, I think, to lower orbit. Now, of course, it's not trivial to convert a Raptor engine to hydrogen and oxygen. It's a totally different thing, especially if you want it to operate efficiently. Well, hopefully that's good enough for uh, as a centering, and that's 50 tons, so let's close that up. Okay, so that's 600 tons there, less than half of the mass of the other... Starship, the methane oxygen one, and so it'll be easier to refuel depending on how much we actually get into orbit, right? Its dry mass is also less, it's less than 100 tons dry mass because we're carrying fewer engines. We've dumped three engines. Now we've got another issue though, and the other issue is Super Heavy is way powerful now. You can see at sea level thrust to weight ratio is 1.77. We'll get to the same thrust to weight ratio that we had with the other super heavy with the Mephalox version instead of having the extra engines here. Otherwise it'll... but we have another problem in that it probably gets too far out for return. We'll have to see. Um, I think that's it. It was at 1.5 if I recall. So this is about the same now. The, uh, the Hydrolox Starship does not have as much total Delta V as the Mephalox one because the fuel is not so dense, it ends up not having as much Delta V. If we could make the Starship bigger, that would be better, so that it could carry more fuel, but assuming the same Starship, that being a constraint, it's a little bit tight. So it's requiring Super Heavy to do more, but we don't really want Super Heavy to do more because Super Heavy doing more makes it harder for Super Heavy to come back. And so I'm actually going to take a look at the video of the previous launch and we're going to try and make sure that we take into account how fast Super Heavy is going. I want to see how fast it was going when it shut down the engines at 20 seconds to spare with fuel. So let me take a look at that and I'll come back. Okay, it appears it had 1,967 meters per second, so we'll keep that in mind. And uh, the overall delta V with the upper stage left over in the first stage, I'm saying that really badly, is uh, was about 900 something. So the question is whether the first stage would have enough delta V to come back from a higher velocity maybe, we'll see. Okay, we have some accidental kerbals in, but we'll just go with it. 
uh, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. The plumes will not be hydrolocks though. I did not change that for the hydrolocks configuration. This is a one-off test as far as I'm concerned after all. Uh, of course, the super heavy plumes would never, well, aren't hydrolocks anyway, they're methylocks right now still. But even the starship's plumes will not be different. Alright, max Q throttle down. And throttling up. Okay, we are getting to the speeds where the Meflox one was released, but we have a whole 50 seconds of burn time left here. So we'll let it burn a little bit past, as long as I think we have enough Delta V in the booster to return it safely. You do the full retro, slow down, and all that business. Right now, we have way over that. Okay, at 35 seconds, I'll cut it off, but that's probably very generous anyway. Separation and ignition. Three engines only here now. Okay, and just switching briefly here. We see as 7,000 meters per second here. It surely can get back. It only needs to cut out uh, 2,400 and do basically 2,400 more to do the RTLS, and then it'll still have 2,000 left to actually uh, do the braking burn and then set down. So, uh, yes, I think it's got plenty. We might have been overdoing it, uh, being overly generous with how much we're keeping in there. But given the fact that we were going faster anyway, I felt that it was probably prudent. Okay, we need to shut down the sea level. Okay, we have shut down. It's 225 by 196, about the same orbit. We ended up with 1186 meters per second left, which, you know, is worse. But we did sort of reserve a little bit too much, perhaps, in the Super Heavy itself. But ignoring that still, there is the fact that this is overall lighter, and we're carrying the 50-ton payload still. So, taking a look at how much we have compared, to how, how much fuel we need if we want to replenish this, we started off at about 600 tons. And right now we've got the 50 tons dry and then 43 tons of fuel here. So that's 93 tons overall that a subsequent starship like this could bring up in theory. Of course, there's the fins and all. For those starships, they have to have the fins and everything, assuming they're still hydrolocks because that'd be the best way to refuel it. We have a little bit more dry mass on them. Uh, so, But ignoring that for now because we ignored that with the Mephalox version as well, so we're trying to be consistent on that. Uh, 93 tons is what another starship could bring up to refuel this. And what we need is 600 minus because we started off with about 600 tons, 186. And so divide by 93, it would only take four and a half starships, or let's say five starship trips to refuel this compared to seven, a little bit more than seven actually, for the Mephalox version. And overall, this had about 6,000 meters per second to work with, which is enough to go to the moon and land, though it would then need to refuel. But um, I don't think... It depends on the load it's carrying with the Lunar Starship Mephalox version, whether it can travel to the moon, land, and return to lunar orbit uh, without refueling. That will depend on what load it's taking. Let's take a look at this in the VAB again. So this is not out of the question, though. I mean, it's not fundamentally changing what Starship could do, and it's refuelable on the moon. So. It has benefits, 6,500 meters per second. It takes 3,200, let's say, to get to the moon, 800 to make orbit, and so that's 4,000, and that leaves you 2,462 to land, which is generally enough. And if you could refuel on the moon, then you're basically good to go. So that amount is not unreasonable. 606 tons is fairly good uh, for, I mean, 
Uh, cutting cutting starships mass in half is nice. It's especially nice if you go down to the ones with fins because then you actually don't need that much surface area. You need half as much surface area to do the aero braking and landing. You might not need much fins at all. Uh, you just need them as control surfaces, not as elements of drag, I guess you could say. So it might be uh, more efficient like that. Uh, we'd have to take a look at the aerodynamics and boy are the aerodynamics of Starship complicated. So we'll leave that be for now, but that's the idea. A Hydrolox Starship. And I'm sure it'll be controversial. We'll see. Anyway, uh, so with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.